All right, so this is a uh, introductory look at the new uh, rib trim procedural mesh fusion uh, item assembly preset uh, for Moto 11.2. And uh, I've got a very simple fusion scene set up here. We can pretend for the purposes of this demo that it's an interesting model. Um, and if we had this interesting model and we wanted to create that sort of rib structure that this uh, assembly was intended to do, um, it's pretty straightforward. And that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of the uh, features and uh, options. It's actually a fairly deep tool uh, with uh, lots of capability and can be applied in a number of ways, but I think the best thing to do here is just to walk through a simple use case. So we'll go here to the Add Item button, and uh, inside of Item Assemblies we see mesh fusion uh, assemblies, and down here at the bottom is rib trim. So I'll double click on that, which adds it to our scene, and uh, we see it here in this uh, gray colored uh, folder. All of the goodies are in there, and this is the basic structure and UI that have been uh, brought in and placed in the center of Moto's uh, universe. And I just uh, ducked away for a moment there and fixed the materials so that the, only the fusion item has that green material and our, our rib trim is using the default material just so we can uh, see the difference between uh, the things we're dealing with here. All right, so the idea is we want to use this kind of array of blocks as trims to create a kind of ribbed pattern in our uh, fusion model there. And that uh, array of blocks uh, is derived from this simple uh, plane with a grid on it. And the reason that it has this form is because the default setup of the rib trim uh, assembly is to have the geometry UV transformed onto one of several included uh, simple UV transform targets this one being kind of a hemisphere. That's the default setup, and uh, conveniently for this demo, it's similar to uh, our form that we want to trim. Now, the reason we don't use UVs from our destination, since we, you might think that would make sense because we'll get our form to fit onto there, is because quite often our destination uh, will not be trivial, like it isn't here. It's got this little uh, rim of a bevel around it and uh, the way UV transform works it not only sets the position of these objects of these uh, meshes but it also conforms to the uh, surface normals so even if we were it was uh, convenient and we had proper UV the appropriate UVs uh, it wouldn't work here because our blocks would get all warbled uh, as they crossed over those parts of the mesh so uh, the better uh, solution is to have these uh, simple uh, UV transform targets, uh, have a variety of them, or even make a custom one if it's really necessary, but quite often uh, the, the, uh, the ones included with the uh, preset will, uh, will do. Alright, so the UV transform target mesh, this hemisphere in this case, uh, is the best way to position and uh, scale our trim. So I'm just going to select that Get the move tool and move it over here into the general area and you'll see of course our trim comes with it because it's being UV transformed onto that target. Uh, and we'll take the rotation tool, and control rotate to snap at 90 degrees and then adjust the position again. And you know you don't have to be terribly accurate here. It just depends on what you're doing. You just want to get it, in this case for this demo, just getting it close enough will do. I'm going to go back to items here and hide the actual trim. This is this, this item called uh, rib trim is the procedural assembly that creates the blocks. We can go ahead and, and uh, hide that. And now we have only our target, which is in this targets folder. So that way I can see more clearly if I'm getting the target about where I want it to be. So we'll get it more or less centered here. And I can see that it's um, 
spherical and the target is elliptical and, and our uh, fusion item is elliptical so I'll also do a little scaling here and make it narrower and whoops narrower and taller All right, close enough, pretty close indeed. All right, so let's bring back our trim. And again, of course, it's conforming to that target mesh. I'm uh, gonna go ahead and hide our target just by hiding the folder. And, and you'll see there's, there's several targets in there uh, optional UV targets. Um, but I'll just hide the whole folder and take a look at how our trim appears. And you can see that it's it's because the target was a nice tight fit to our surface. Uh, the trims are just kind of just barely touching, if touching at all. And uh, that's fine. We could you know you could adjust the UV target mesh so that it was uh, inside of your uh, mesh that you wish to trim. Or uh, there's a handy control for doing that adjustment as well. And the kind of really basic uh, controls that you'll be using very frequently are all found in this little control panel here, which can be moved anywhere on the screen. I'm gonna move it closer to our uh, work so that we can have it handy. And you'll notice that when I clicked on it, it brought up this uh, popover form that has uh, uh, even more controls, and, and a lot of these again are very uh, fairly commonly used, although a lot of them will probably just remain at the defaults for most of what you will want to do. Um, but the one we are interested in at the moment is this little box here in our control panel, which controls the offset, that's the parameter of the uh, UV transform mesh op, uh, the offset of our uh, trims from that UV transform target mesh. And uh, these trims are sort of built up from, from just uh, polygons, 2D polygons. So, you know, it's those 2D polygons that are resting on the surface of the uh, UV transform mesh, and I'm just offsetting them uh, relative to that surface. And in this case, we'll make them sink in a little bit. And as long as we're here, the other very fundamental controls that are in this control panel include uh, the rib width, which scales all the blocks and uh, leaves the uh, adjust the gap in between them. Uh, this is rounding, which uh, rounds the corners of the blocks. And this is uh, uh, depth or height, however you want to think of it, of the, uh, of the blocks. So again, growing up from, that, uh, from the polygons, the source polygons that are lying on the UV transform surface, growing outward from there. And it's usually a good idea to, you know, to have them be a, a somewhat close fit. You don't need to get finicky about it, uh, but you don't want them way out here. It's just not uh, healthy for mesh fusion purposes. So get a decent fit there and you're ready to go. All right, so with everything in place, uh, we can just use uh, mesh fusions drag and drop capability to uh, make this a trim. So I'm just gonna drag it, drop it on our target mesh here and say apply subtraction. And there we have it. We've got our rib structure cut into our fusion model. And of course, uh, all the adjustments we just looked at are still there and they are live. So I can increase the width, change the amount of rounding, Uh, could adjust the depth and all that stuff, whatever you want to do. Um, but probably more fun and more interesting is playing with the pattern. So, you know, we have this simple waffle-like grid pattern here, and the reason that's there is because this is our uh, pattern down here, this simple grid, which can also be moved anywhere for convenience. So again, we'll move it into the general vicinity of our modeling. And uh, we can change the shape of our ribs by simply editing this as a mesh. As again, it's just a simple 2D plane 
could have any collection of polygons on it. it doesn't have to be a grid. It could be all sorts of uh, interesting things. Uh, I'll turn uh, symmetry on to make this easier. And let's say I look at this and I go, well, I don't really want this pattern to sort of arc up like that on the on that side of my uh, model. So I will uh, go to vertex mode, uh, select some vertices, and move them. And you can see the pattern change there on the model. So that's more what I like what I would like. And maybe I even want to um, get it to conform or get it to be a little more uh, level, so to speak, across the uh, model. So move these vertex out. So there you go. We reshape the uh, the ribs to uh, to a pattern that I like better. Um, and you can do as much of this kind of stuff as you like. Let's see, we might want to pick some edges. And uh, let's uh, scale those towards the center. Get some variety to our waffle pattern. Yeah, that's certainly more interesting. All right, so that's, that's really, you know, that's the basic use. Uh, Get your uh, pick your pick your UV target. We'll look at how how that has changed, how you change your UV targets uh, in another video. But you once you have your UV target, you get it oriented uh, with uh, oriented to your uh, destination model fusion item. Um, apply it and uh, make adjustments to your rib pattern, and that's about all there is to it. I mean, there's a lot more we can do. But uh, it's really as simple as that, and it's a basic usage. All right, thanks.